we developed a program that automatically finds your perfect sensitivity. In this detailed guide, we will talk about why your intuitive sensitivity varies from game to game and how Oblivity's algorithm automates the process of finding your intuitive sensitivity. After finishing this guide, you will know how to easily use and get the most out of our sensitivity finder. We'll also show you step by step on how to use the sense finder and also address common misconceptions when it comes to finding your sensitivity. If you're new here, let's quickly explain the sensitivity finder. It's all automated using an algorithm. You set up a profile, enter all your settings, and then our algorithm guides you through various scenarios designed to mimic real situations in the game. The more you play, the more data the algorithm collects. It then shows you how well you did in each scenario and identifies which sensitivity worked for you the best. Let's break it down in detail. Firstly, why is it important to find your optimal sensitivity? Well, sensitivity varies from game to game. The aiming sensitivity you might use in a game like Valorant might not work well in a faster paced FPS game like Apex. To understand this better, let's compare the two. In Valorant, my sensitivity is 0.2. This is because Valorant requires mostly horizontal aiming done slowly. The focus in this game is on crosshair placement and making small adjustments. Now let's look at Apex, where aiming is more intuitive, based on tracking and reaction. If I were to use my Valorant sensitivity in Apex, it wouldn't make sense. It would actually hold me back, causing me to aim very slowly in a game where quick aiming is more important. There is one more important thing that we need to talk about when it comes to changing your mouse sensitivity frequently. A big misconception is that switching sensitivity will make you lose all your aiming progress and muscle memory. This isn't true, and the term muscle memory is often misused in the aiming community. Changing sensitivity won't ruin your aiming progress. On the contrary, it can actually help you overcome plateaus. This also means that you don't find your perfect sensitivity and oblivity and use it for the rest of your life. As you grow as an aimer, you will improve on certain aspects in your aiming, and your optimal sensitivity will adjust accordingly. Oblivity will reveal the sensitivity you currently perform the best with. But how do you find your perfect sensitivity. Many players often go on practice mode in game and try to feel it out. However, this method isn't so reliable because players can easily misinterpret their feelings or analyze incorrectly. Now let's compare manual analysis versus automated analysis. I'm going to jump into Valorant range. My sensitivity is currently set at 800 dpi, 0.2. I'll do a series of three runs and try to catch where I went wrong with my current sensitivity. You see in those three runs I just did manually, I'm able to tell what's weak about my sensitivity based on my intuition and what I visually perceive. So I may be feeling that I'm less stable horizontally with this sensitivity and I'm undershooting, but by how much exactly? However, if we let the algorithm have a look at this run, we can get the exact values for all the aiming data, like the stability and the undershooting in this case. This makes it possible to perfectly compare different sensitivity levels. And that is because the algorithm gives me real accurate data and values that I can assess. Also, suppose I do 100 runs. I may only remember what happened exactly in the last few runs, as opposed to the algorithm where it's able to store and make accessible to me all the data from each of those 100 runs. Let's explore how to use Oblivity Sense Finder effectively and efficiently. We'll discuss both the basic and advanced aspects of it. Let's start by creating a new profile. I'll be doing my sense finding in Valorant, but you can set it to whichever game you play. In this case, we'll name it Valorant Sense Finding. Next, let's move on to the skill level. Here you want to choose a level based on how familiar you are with aiming fundamentals of the game. This setting determines which scenario the algorithm will use in your runs. Think of it this way. A beginner faces different scenarios in a game compared to a pro player, even though they're both playing the exact same game. In my case, I'll set it to professional. Now let's talk about progress speed. Progress speed basically determines how many total runs and total days you're going to need to complete your profile. We recommend setting this to accurate. Remember, the more data collected by the algorithm, the more precise the result will be. Moving on to game settings, here you simply want to set which game you're trying to find your optimal sensitivity in. For example, Valorant. Then you want to input your sensitivity, which is the current sensitivity you're using in that specific game. This will only offer the algorithm a starting point, but it won't influence your final sensitivity. Now for the field of view settings, typically the FOV settings will be automatically set based on the game you've picked. However, if you've changed it inside your game, then you should do the same here. For aim style, here you need to pick which aim style that you use. Do you use your arm to aim or your wrist? Or do you mix the two? Note that once you choose this setting, it's important to maintain that aiming style. If you do decide to change your aim style later on in the future, then you should come back and recreate the profile all over again. Moving on to sensitivity range. Oblivity will now ask you to scan your mouse pad to find a suitable sense range for your runs. You want to be very careful with this step. The key is to scan your main aim style, which is the aim style you've input earlier. The idea is not to scan the entire mouse pad, but just the actively used space while aiming. So what you want to 
do is grip your mouse how you normally do. Move your mouse to the very left and click. Then move your mouse to the very right and click again. For example, if I've set my aim style to arm, then I'll scan with my arm like so. If I've set it to wrist, then this is how I scan. If I set it to mixed, then I'll utilize both my wrist and arm to scan. By the way, if you've messed up the scanning, just try again by clicking the restart button. Now that you've scanned your aiming space, Oblivity has set a sense range for you. Sense range refers to the values Oblivity will test you on. So if the minimum of the sensitivity range is set to 0.2 and the maximum is set to 0.4, Oblivity will conduct your runs between those values. You can also adjust the range manually, but keep in mind, the algorithm will only test you between the min and max value. Here, Oblivity asks you to input your current DPI settings. So I'm going to set it to 800 in my case. Now to find out the DPI settings of your mouse, navigate to your mouse's main website and look into the manual. Most mice these days require downloaded softwares such as GHub where you can change your DPI. It is vital to maintain the DPI you've set for your tests. If I do my Oblivity profile with 800 DPI, I'll stick to and maintain that DPI in the sense finder and the game. We also advise against doubling or halving the DPI and changing the sensitivity settings in the game accordingly. This is bad because of the DPI deviations the mouse sensor is exposed to. That is to say, your sensor may deviate more or less at 800 DPI than at 1600 DPI. And this leads to a slightly different EDPI ultimately. Onto the advanced tab. In here, most of you don't need to change anything. But just in case, you have different X and Y sensitivities in your game. For example, you're playing Fortnite with a different vertical and horizontal sensitivity. Then you can set it here too. When it comes to these settings, like data fall off and custom formulas, we'll break down what they do and what they're useful for later in the video. When you've finished your first steps, you'll be taken to the Sense Finder screen, where the algorithm has prepared a playlist for you based on the settings you've input. All you have to do now is click play to start your playlist. Note that the algorithm will evenly distribute all your runs across all your scenarios. A few things to keep in mind when you start your runs. Firstly, do not hyper-focus on accuracy. Aim as you would naturally in the game. Secondly, every round your sensitivity changes. Keep the run going even if it feels awkward and new. Lastly, when big jumps in sensitivity happens, don't panic. It's intended that way. This is the sensitivity range you're being tested in so that Oblivity collects more data. After you've played a few rounds, you'll see the progress icon. And this shows how reliable your current optimal sensitivity is. Total runs and total days. Here are the total runs you need to finish in a day. In order to successfully complete your sensitivity finder profile, you're going to need to finish the required runs for each day and the required amount of days. We recommend aiming for 100% completion rate or more to get an accurate result. Now this bar chart over here displays the progress of different days you've played so far. Now as you can see, on day 2 I've done 100 rounds, but on day 3 I've done 300 rounds. After 75 runs, Oblivity will display your current optimal sensitivity. Keep in mind that it won't be accurate in the beginning since you need to play more runs. But how does the algorithm actually work? Like how does it calculate? Let's take one of the runs as an example. Here you can see the algorithm is making me play this scenario with this specific sensitivity. Now what the algorithm is going to do is evaluate this run's performance. Depending on how I utilize my aim in this run, the algorithm will collect values like score, undershooting, overshooting, and stability. Based on these values, it will rate the run with an overall performance score. Now if we do multiple runs, let's say you've done 10 runs, the algorithm will be able to start comparing your performance on different sensitivity levels. After enough runs, it will detect a trend and show you where you have performed the best. This is why the more runs you do, the more data the algorithm can collect. The more data, the more accurate and precise your results will be. Using your overall performance as a benchmark to compare different sensitivities brings a big advantage. We cover all the factors that decide which sensitivity is optimal for you, both directly and indirectly. The algorithm directly takes into account aiming errors like accuracy, overshooting and undershooting, and more. But looking at the overall performance also incorporates indirect factors, like aim or grip style, hand size, arm length, genetics, and reaction times, all of which have an influence on your performance as well as your sensitivity. One of the most crucial part about using the algorithm when it comes to sense finding is the scenarios and the playlist. The scenarios have to mimic real aiming situations inside the game. This allows the algorithm to find the sensitivity fitting your game. Going back to our earlier point in the video, I can't find my perfect sensitivity on aiming fundamentals on Valorant and apply that to Apex, which is exactly why we recommend our own Oblivity playlists that are specifically tailored to each game. The algorithm is also able to detect if you're in a honeymoon phase, i.e you're having a lucky run or you're simply feeling it on that day. In those situations, what the algorithm will do is make you go through the runs with a similar sensitivity on a later day to confirm if this sensitivity is naturally good for you or not. And vice versa, if you're having an unlucky run or a bad day, the algorithm will take you through the same process. Now that you've studied this guide and followed along and completed your profile, you may be asking yourself, okay, I've done my runs, I've gotten my perfect sensitivity, why am I not aiming like simple? And the answer to this is after finding your intuitive sensitivity, there are a few things to keep in mind 
when translating that sensitivity into the game. To ensure a smooth translation, we recommend the following. Step 1. Copy your exact settings into your game. Your DPI, your aim style that you've completed your profile with, and stick with it. Step 2. Take time to adjust. Incorporating your newfound oblivity sensitivity to the game takes time and adjusting too. Lastly, manage your expectations. Playing on an intuitive sensitivity when it comes to your game is an important factor, but it's not the only factor. Other vital aspects are movements, aim sense, decision making, and awareness. We also recorded an in-depth guide on how to translate your aim training into the game. It covers a lot of fundamental factors on how to smoothly translate any external training into your game. At this point, you know everything about how to utilize the sense finder correctly, but there is still more. Let's move on to the advanced page of your profile. Moving down, you see what the best performing sensitivity is in each scenario you played. This is very interesting, since in each scenario, there are only very isolated aiming skills that you got tested in. What we can do now is compare our overall best performing sensitivity with sensitivities in each scenario. So it can be useful to keep in mind where the strengths and weaknesses of your sensitivity lie when you are playing the game. The optimal way to play Oblivity is to continually use the sense finder within a single profile. This ensures that your optimal sensitivity is always up to date, reflecting your current aiming skill. For larger profiles with many days of play, it's useful to utilize a data falloff so that newer data is prioritized over older runs. The days played within the falloff period are weighted equally. For instance, if you set it to 14, the last 14 play days will have the same impact on determining the optimal sensitivity. Subsequent days will progressively carry less weight. You can adjust the falloff power to control the rate of decrease. A weight of 0.1, for example, means that data from runs after 10 days are not included in the calculation anymore. Moving on to custom formulas. This is a feature you can play around with to have a look at specific aspects of your SenseFinder profile or create your own custom performance score formula. You see Oblivity's algorithm calculates an overall performance value for each round in order to rate how a user performs on a sensitivity. By creating your own formula, you can basically tell Oblivity what values to take into account when giving you an overall performance score. For example, here I'll create a very simple custom formula. I'll write in brackets minus deviation plus accuracy. What this will do is it will give me the best sensitivity output perform the best on when it comes to the most accurate with the least amount of deviation. If I add damage, it will do the same, but this time it will give me the most accurate sense with the least amount of deviation plus the most damage dealt. You can always switch back to Oblivity's main algorithm by just selecting it on the list. So we've talked about all the factors Oblivity Sense Finder takes into account when it comes to finding a sensitivity, but what are its limitations? Our scenario playlists are designed to perfectly match a typical player in a certain game on a certain skill level. If you have a special play style that differs from the typical playstyle, i.e. you have different needs for your sensitivity, the scenario selection might not be perfect for you individually. That is to say, if you have a distinct aiming style, you may need a distinct SenseFinder playlist. In this case, you could start by creating your own personal SenseFinder playlist that cover exactly the aiming skills your aim style requires. If you want to see an in-depth guide about creating your perfect personal SenseFinder playlist, let us know in the comments below. At this point, you've learned everything there is to know about Oblivity SenseFinder, from the basics to how to utilize it to the more advanced and the complicated. If you face any obstacles in your journey to find your perfect sensitivity, feel free to reach out to us on our Discord server or leave us a comment below and we will help you out. Thank you a lot for watching the whole guide and see you in the next video.